fine wine comes from an awful lot of details along the way. And you know, most of us up here, and, and we specifically, are really striving to make wines that are going to bring attention to this region, mm-hmm. bring attention to our brand as something unique. Black Star Farms Surly Chardonnay is the best-selling local wine in Airy Restaurant and Lounge. We show you how it goes from vine to wine in this episode of the Barefoot Podcast. So we're out here at Black Star Farms on Leelanau Peninsula in Sutton's Bay. I'm joined with uh, Lee Lutz. You are the head winemaker here, and you've been here for a while, Lee. Yes, I have, since uh, we really got started back in 1998. So give me just a quick brief history on Black Star Farms, because it's a very unique property, and this one in Sutton's Bay is not your only one. No, no, we actually have a property on Old Mission as well, Um, and that facility is really just a production facility for all of our white wines. Um, and encompasses a fair bit of vineyards around it, as well as our tasting room there. Um, This is where we got started. This was really the founding farm and uh, where we really had the idea to incorporate um, the the tourism aspect of people wanting to see wine production, wanting to be in in tasting rooms, but also have the opportunity to, to stay on the farm and maybe experience it a little bit more up close and personal. You know, when we first started, um, there weren't an awful lot of people that had experience in Michigan with wineries, and they were not um, they were not seeing it firsthand. And knowing that there was an awful lot of marketing that was going on, an awful lot of tourism uh, coming into the area, uh, we really wanted to give people the opportunity to be closer to the to the production side of things on their way to the tasting rooms. You know, it, there were numerous wineries up here that had tasting rooms. You could certainly go in and taste wine and buy wine, but we felt like there was a missing link in terms of getting people a little bit closer to that. So well, and that you was are, the idea behind this farm. You can hear it. I mean, even just sitting right here, we've got it right behind us. You can hear yes, some indeed. of the machinery. You can hear some of the bins going to work and, and things on. And I think that experience is exciting for people because especially those who really do love wine and the the story behind it and the experience behind it and process to yeah. see that i mean i'm sure you guys get a lot of questions about how everything operates oh, and we works do. we do we have a we have a full-time person who's doing nothing but tours right now they really start in the vineyard um and then end up in the tasting room and everything in between so if if you know if there are small groups or or couples that want to come out and and take a tour they can they can learn an awful lot in the course of a couple of hours and then end up tasting the wines and and uh, you know finding the things that they like and and really prefer that way too. Um, it's it's this setting is really unique, mm-hmm. really unique uh, because there is so much going on. You know we have the animals where where you know families can take kids and and get them out of the car and at least spend a little bit of time walking around. But um, you know both with the production side of things, w- with the inn, the bed and breakfast. You know, giving people an opportunity to actually stay on the farm. It's beautiful driving in. I mean, right now, too, with the vines just full of the greenery and yeah. it's harvest, right? This oh, is yeah. harvest season. Absolutely. So this is busy. I always say this is this is sort of the vineyard and the operations in its full glory. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is what we work toward all year. And there's always a lot of work that goes into ramping up for the season and the start of the summer season. And it's a it's a different pace. But this is where everything is peaking. Um, things in the vineyards, things in the winery, things in the tasting room, everything is meshing. And we've been blessed this year so far um, that we haven't had issues. We haven't had personnel challenges. Um, we have an awful lot of people that work with us that love what they do. And an awful lot of our staff has been here for an extended period of time, you know, some approaching 20 years. Wow. And it's, it's people like that that make all the difference. And this is a family-owned yes, it is winery yes, it and is. vineyard. So yep. it, you, I'm sure you, you, everyone here is family as well. Oh yeah, most definitely. So most definitely. you keep calling it a farm because it is. You're, you it are is. growing crops, it is. and it's most definitely. not always easy, no, is it? No, no. <laughs> Anybody who thinks that farming is easy <laughs> has not been to the farm. We this is actually a 160 acre parcel. Wow. Um, and so we have cherries behind us uh, up on the the backside behind the winery. Um, Obviously, we have an awful lot of woodlots here that have to be managed on a regular basis Mm -hmm. that provide walking trails uh, for guests. 
Um, but it's certainly a working farm. You know, we're not we're not growing the majority of our actual vineyard acreage here. Mm-hmm. Um, that's spread out among uh, other vineyard sites around the the Leelanau County and Old Mission. Um, but this is this is a a big agricultural uh, working property. And like you said, it takes a lot of work, a lot of help. It takes a lot of work, <laughs> a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of energy. A lot of moving parts. And it's interesting, too, because it is also a year-round process. You, I mean, this is what you build up to, but it, it happens, that growing and that farming happens year-round, doesn't it? It happens year-round, and, you know, the, the winemaking process, we often get people that say to us, you know, what do you guys do in the wintertime? Isn't the wine made? Aren't you done? And, you know, there's, there is the, the conversion of sugar to alcohol that mm-hmm. happens in the vats. That's the upfront, most basic process that we really start with in all winemaking. But at the end of that, it's not finished product. And everything needs to be stabilized, prepared to go to the bottle. We have to coordinate the bottles and the labels all coming in at the same time. That process usually starts early in the spring and extends through the summer season. Okay. Um, and so, yes, it's a, it's a year-round process, absolutely. So let's dive into, right now, harvest season. Because like you said, this is when you probably notice the farm and the property the busiest. Yes. How does it work from what people grab right there on those vines that you see when you drive in to what you get in your bottle and glass? Well, typically we'll bring in a a harvest crew, Mm -hmm. uh, people who are kind of specializing uh, around us for uh, working the vineyards and harvesting the fruit. And they'll come in and pick into uh, half-ton lugs or half-ton bins we can take a look at those in a little bit later if you'd like to. Um, so we end up with, with multiple bins um, that then are assembled and prepared uh, up near the crush pad. And that fruit is rolled into a hopper up above. It drops onto a sorting table. Everything is looked at by hand. We have people that are standing there sorting the fruit. And, and what we're looking there is to do is just pull out leaves, pull out any debris that happens to come out of the vineyard with the fruit. Um, every once in a while we'll have a cluster come through that's not perfect, mm-hmm. not quite the way we want that. And so those things will get called out and pulled out before the fruit then drops into an elevator, taking it up to the crusher stemmer. The crusher stemmer actually separates the berries from the stems of the grape cluster. And at that point, that fruit drops into a must pump, which is a large open top pump. And that, if it's a red, that fruit then gets pumped into a fermentation tank. Mm-hmm. But if it's a white, that fruit gets pumped into the presses, and the presses separate the, the skins from the juice. Wow. And that juice then later ends up going into barrels or going into tanks for, for fermentation, depending on the wine. So an awful lot of what's going on at that point is really the decision of the winemaker to, to choose how they want to use that fruit uh, to produce the, the targeted type of wine. Okay, and so, it's so different, like you said, for reds and whites. Oh, absolutely, and rosés. Um, you know, sparkling, I mean, sparkling, yeah. all of it. Sometimes the rosés will actually start almost like they're going to be a red wine. Mm-hmm. We'll soak them on the skins without initiating fermentation, just to extract that color, that beautiful, beautiful rosé color. Wouldn't necessarily be there inherently, especially with a variety like Pinot Noir, if you don't first capture more of it because some of that's going to precipitate out as the wine is, is made. And once you, you have an alcohol medium, uh, those uh, color pigments are not stable mm-hmm. and they'll drop to the bottom of the, the tanks and we'll lose some of that. So you have to start with a little bit more for rosé. The process uh, behind it, I mean, it, it's a science. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's absolutely. nothing it's that's science. just, I mean, it, it has a lot of moving parts and factors into it. Well, an awful lot of what I say to people when they ask about winemaking is, you know, winemaking has been, been done throughout the world for thousands of years Mm -hmm. and it's not difficult to have naturally sugared fruit convert to alcohol it'll happen naturally if you let it sit long enough the difference being fine wine comes from an awful lot of details along the way and you know most of us up here and and we specifically are really striving to make wines that are going to bring attention to this region Mm -hmm. bring attention to our brand as something unique and they so. definitely do. I mean, the the tours up here who who come now just just for 
winery visits and winery tours. It's incredible. And we see it at the resort. I mean, at Grand Traverse Resort and Spa, we have Airy Restaurant and Lounge right up on the 16th floor of the tower. It's stunning. There's views of Old Mission Peninsula from there. So maybe if you look really, really hard, you could see your Old Mission tasting room and production facility. But we feature a few of your of your wines. We have a lot of local wines that we feature, but our most popular local wine is your Surly Chardonnay. And with good reason. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me it's, just a little bit about that one specifically, because well, like we I pour, said, it's sure. Yeah, let's yes? let's okay. do it. This was actually the very first wine we ever made at Black Star Farms. Oh my gosh! Um, it was the first fruit coming in. So um, you know, Chardonnay is made in many different forms. And cheers. Cheers. Um, it's it's a wine that never sees oak, never sees barrels. Um, and, and an awful lot of Chardonnay for a while, uh, this is eased back a little bit now, but was always made in barrels, either older barrels or brand new oak barrels. Um, in the old country where Chardonnay really got its, its, uh, its start and still is, is a mainstream variety in, in Burgundy, they do an awful lot in old vats, old wooden mm-hmm. vats. And it gives the wine a little bit of complexity, um, a little bit more depth. It, it weaves really well with their terroir their element that's in the wine so what we try to do with this right from the get-go is have it be a little bit more fruit driven fruit forward um, really bright really clean on the palate the surly component then the lees are the settlings after the fermentation okay so it's all the yeast that that do their work and then eventually settle to the bottom of the tank it's almost like a custard layer and what we do is we stir that custard layer back up into the wine repeatedly over time and as it starts to break down in that alcohol medium, you get a little bit of a creaminess and kind of a richness. So that can add a subtle complexity to the wine without having come from something like barrels or, Interesting. or something else. Okay, so, so this is so much more to it than just the oh, typical Chardonnay wine name. Absolutely. Yeah, it absolutely. looks, and there is a tasting little step process, Protocol. right? What did yep. you do? Well, I like to swirl, okay. and you don't need to do it in the air. You can put it. You can put it on the table and just move it in a circle. Okay. Okay. And so all you're doing there is you're you're uh, increasing the surface area of the wine on the inside of the glass. I often roll the glass too, just to do the same thing, just to roll it around. What that also does is it allows you the opportunity to look at the wine. So this wine has a little bit of a, a, a golden sort of greenish hue to it right now. It's beautiful. With um, the sun coming down on us now. It's like <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> it's, uh, it's very fresh. You know, it looks young. It looks youthful. It looks bright. And what that says to me is, and, and wine will start to turn golden mm-hmm. as it oxidizes a little bit and as it's not quite as fresh. So with a presentation like this, I know that I'm going to be um, smelling and tasting a wine that should be very bright and very, um, very forthcoming with an, an element of freshness. Okay. So I want to smell fresh fruit in this glass. I want to smell fresh white flowers, maybe in this Ooh, glass. Okay, white flowers. Okay. Right as you said that. Yes. <laughs> white flowers. Fresh white flowers. Yes. Yes, it does. Not, not something that smells like it's maybe a little bit older. Nope. No, very fresh. It has yeah. a very fresh scent to it. Yep. So often, um, I think it serves us well to capture a little bit of that aromatic profile. I always say to people, you're going to smell different things way up above the rim than you will if you get your nose close to the Mm -hmm. rim. I think you and I have had this conversation before, (laughs) but I encourage people to get their nose right Right into the glass. glass. Yep. (laughs) And very close to the surface of the wine because Mm. there you'll, you'll pick up maybe a little bit more of that surly element. And it's, it is a little bit like, like cream. At least it's a little richer, right? Definitely a little richer. Yeah. And then, of course, comes the time to taste. Now's the time to taste. Yes. <laughs> I will say, too, this is actually my first time having this. It having is. Having this wine. It is. Huh. It's very good. Yeah. So anybody who likes things like Pinot Grigios. Which I or, do. And this, I will be honest, I don't always go towards a Chardonnay. It would not right. be my first pick for white wines. But this leaves you with, I mean, the the... It's just so much fresher. Yeah. That really is kind of the best word to use for it. Yeah. Well, you know, I think Pinot Grigio is so popular because it is a fresh expression of Pinot mm-hmm. Gris um, as a grape. And that's what this Chardonnay is as well. We, we get so many people in the tasting room that will say, I'll taste that's anything good. other than Chardonnay. 
and we'll say, well, okay, we, I've got a glass of something I'd like to pour and, and heavy taste. That would be me. We'll taste, <laughs> we'll pour this for them and they'll say, wow, that's delicious. What is it? Then we'll tell them Chardonnay. the Chardonnay. And, and uh, it's a little bit of a reawakening or a, you know, a, a new enlightenment to the I variety. can see why it is our best seller. Well, it's In fabulous. Airy. It's fabulous with um, appetizers, anything that's seafood mm-hmm. oriented. Which is, we have um, a very seafood heavy menu. Yep, anything that is uh, vegetable oriented. Mm-hmm. You know, where you've got fresh produce. Um, it's actually beautiful with with simple things like you know fruit, uh, fruit salads and fruit uh, as a compote on the side of a of a main course. But a delicate piece of our local f- whitefish or walleye. With oh, something like this fantastic. is over the top delicious. Well, and we have a couple others too from you guys. So yep. there's the rosé, right? The Pinot Noir rosé? Yes, Is indeed. that the other one? And yep. then the Pinot Noir? The Pinot Gris. Pinot Gris. Pinot Gris. Pinot Gris. Yep. So all very different still. Um, lighter wines, but... Um, lighter wines, brighter wines. You know, the, the rosé is something we've also been doing for probably 16 years. Mm-hmm. Um, we're one of the larger producers of Pinot Noir in the Northwest. And uh, as a rosé, it makes a beautiful, beautiful expression of the of the variety. Um, it tends to be a seasonal wine, but we like to draw that season out a little bit and encourage people to be tasting it when it's really fresh in the springtime. But then even to be tasting it now as you start to you know, fall into heavier fare right. and richer foods, it's it's a great starter. It still works. Yeah, great starter wine as an aperitif for, or as an appetizer wine. And Pinot Gris, Pinot Gris is our expression of the grape variety Pinot Gris. Mm-hmm. The Italians, you know, um, did a, a very good job marketing. It is Pinot Grigio, which is what they call it in Italy. And of course, that's kind of spread throughout the world a little bit as a as a type of of Pinot Gris. Um, it uh, it tends to be a little bit lighter and a little bit brighter. We make this Pinot Gris to be a little bit richer, kind of like the Surly. We want it to be a little bit weightier on the palate, a little bit more complex without just being tutti frutti and light and fun. So okay. people that like Pinot Gris tend to like that wine an awful lot, um, or Pinot Grigio, but it's a little bit, I think it's a little bit more complex, a little yeah. bit broader on the palate. Yeah, I, it's something I, I tend to go for. Yeah. But I really, honestly, I'm enjoying this Chardonnay. Yeah. Oh, it's very good. good. Reason. With good it's reason. It's very good. So. Yeah. What does the rest of the harvest kind of timeline look like? If people are looking to visit Black Star Farms and, like you've said, kind of actually see the behind-the-scenes production and a little more of a working farm, how much longer do you guys go for? Well, we'll be we'll be operating through the harvest for another couple of weeks. Um, you know, there's there's an awful lot going on uh, with fruit coming in. Mm-hmm. We try to avoid the really busy times, like on a on a Saturday, bringing fruit in. Uh, but the wineries are both in production. Uh, even on Saturdays and Sundays right now. We're in our full glory. It's a beautiful property. Really and, and like you said, I mean, year round, but this I think is one of the most spectacular times. Yeah. The colors and just hearing the the production happening and everything, it's just, it doesn't get better. No, It doesn't it get really better. Doesn't. Well, thank you, Lee. And uh, of course for you guys, again, cheers to cheers. a bountiful harvest thank you, and thank another you. successful year. Yes. Stay tuned for the next episode Thanks of for Barefoot. For more details, visit grandtraversresort.com.